Look, I'm going to tell y'all the truth. I was paralyzed the first time I saw Parallax. For real though. Hey, Pinnacle Studio Peach, how y'all doing out there? Y'all know who it is, that's right. I'm back on your screen, bringing you more Pinnacle Studio love from Pinnacle Studio Pro. Today, I'm bringing you the parallax scrolling effect using Pinnacle Studio, and I'm gonna break it down for you in Pinnacle Studio 19 Ultimate. So let's jump off into the software and make it happen. All right, Pinnacle Studio peeps, here we are in Pinnacle Studio 19 Ultimate. And it's time for me to show you how to get your parallax scrolling text thing on. But before I do that, I want to remind you of a few quick things. Remember to like, comment, and share this video. When you do those things, it lets people know that the content in the video is good, and it lets them know that they need to sit down, chillax, and check out the video. Always remember to subscribe to Pinnacle Studio Pro. If you subscribe to Pinnacle Studio Pro, then you'll be able to know whenever I upload new tutorials and you'll be able to check them out and learn how to use the program. If you don't subscribe, then you won't know when I upload new content and you'll be missing out and the only person you'll have to blame is yourself. So make sure that you subscribe to Pinnacle Studio Pro, all right? Let's get our Parallax scrolling text thing going on. For those of you who don't know, Parallax scrolling text is a situation where the screen scrolls upward and the text scrolls in any direction. It could scroll up, sideways, down, whatever. Let me show you an example. The first thing I want to do is I need to create two or more, however many you want, layered images. Now I'm not going to show you how to create layered images because they can't be created using Pinnacle Studio. They have to be created using a photo editor. So you can easily search YouTube and find uh, create layered image paint.net or create layered image Photoshop. Search that. You'll find out how to do it. Then you can come back here and finish off the tutorial. But if you don't feel like doing that right now, then just check out the tutorial, finish it up. And if you like what you see, you could do that layered image thing later. So I have two layered images in my library. The first one is the background. The background is a JPEG because I don't need to see through any of it. The foreground is a PNG image where all this black area is actually transparent so you can see through that. All the rest of it is clouds. So when I place them in the timeline, I need to place them in a way so that the background and the foreground are separated so that I can make it look like the text is coming through the clouds like you saw in the demonstration. So I'm going to take the background layer. I'm going to left click on it and I'm going to drag it down into one of the bottom AV tracks. Now, I want to make this longer because I want my title to be longer, so my image has to be longer. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go to Adjust Duration. And I'm going to type in a duration I want. I already made this effect like you saw in the demo, so I know how long I want it to be. Next thing I need to do is drag down my foreground image and my foreground needs to be on top of the background. So I'm going to left click on it and I'm going to drag it down into the top timeline track. And then I'm going to place my cursor on the edge of it until I see a vertical line and an arrow, which means that I can change the length of the clip. So I'm going to hold down my left mouse. I'm going to drag this out and till it snaps into place, and now they're both the exact same duration. Next thing I want to do is I want to make my timeline stretched out some so I can see more frames and makes it easier for me to do what I need to do with the title and the scrolling and everything. So I'm going to place my cursor over this little bar at the edge of it. And when I see a line with two arrows on it, I'm going to left click my mouse, hold it down, drag this to the left, and it'll make my timeline 
stretch out so I can see more frames. Beautiful. Next thing I need to do is I need to add some scrolling to these images. So I'm going to right click on the bottom image and I'm going to go to open effects editor. Then I'm going to go to 2D, 3D. And I'm going to go to 2D Editor Advanced. I need to change this from default. To no preset. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to change this to solo because I don't want to see the foreground, which is showing right now. When I click on solo, you're going to see a lot of these clouds and stuff disappear. There. All right. So now that I've got the background completely isolated, the first thing I want to do is make sure that my playhead is actually at the beginning of the title. When you open it up, it jumps to the end mostly. So I'm going to click on the jump backward button and now my playhead is at the beginning and I'm going to come up here to size. Now I want to change the size because I want the actual image to be big enough so that I can scroll. If I try to scroll right now, as soon as I started scrolling the image, you're going to see black. So I'm going to go to size and then I'm going to go here to this padlock. Make sure that the padlock is locked and it is orange. If it isn't, click on the padlock. And then what that does is it locks the horizontal and the vertical so that when you change one, the aspect ratio stays the same and it doesn't get all crazy like, you know? So now I'm going to change either one horizontal or the vertical to 200. So now the image is bigger. So now if I scroll, I get to see more of the image. I won't see a black screen. So the next thing I need to do is I need to go up to the 2D editor advanced area and I need to turn on keyframing by clicking on this little diamond. And when you click on it, it should turn orange. And now it also created a keyframe at the beginning of the title. So now we need to go to position. When we go to position, this is going to create our scrolling that we were trying to do. We made it bigger so that we can scroll. So now we need to scroll. So we're going to change the vertical. So we want everything to move down at the beginning of the clip so that we can scroll up. So in order to move everything down, I'm going to do this to negative 50. And I'm going to hit enter. I already know that negative 50 is the right number for me. If I did negative 51, you start to see black at the top. All right. So that's the first keyframe. So now I'm going to click on the jump forward button. So it goes to the end. And now I'm going to change the keyframe to 50 and this makes it scroll all the way to the bottom. So now if I scrub my playhead across this, you see that when I go forward, it goes from the top of the image all the way to the bottom of the image. So when we play this back, you'll have that effect on the screen. So I'm going to click on OK. And now we want that same effect to be on the foreground because they have to move together. So I'm going to place my cursor over this pink line until I see an arrow and the letters FX. I'm going to right click on that, go to effect. Then I'm going to go to copy all. Now I'm going to right click on the foreground image and I'm going to go to paste. And 
and now everything is scrolling from the top to the bottom beautiful next thing I need to do is add my title so you're gonna have to add your title at the position and the timeline that is best for you and you're gonna have to make some adjustments until you get it exactly where you want it I already know where I want mine at so I'm gonna place mine there so I'm gonna click on track 2 to make sure that it's activated and then I'm gonna click on the create title button and when I do that, it should add a title on track to right where my playhead is located. So now you can type in whatever text you want, use whatever font you want, and change it to whatever color you want. All right, now that that's all done, you need to create your scrolling for the text. So what we're gonna do is go to motions. Emphasis. And roll up. Now, as you can see, if you scrub the timeline, you can see that everything is scrolling upward and they're scrolling at different speeds, which is good. That's what they're supposed to do. But you can't really see the text coming out of the clouds. So what you need to do is place your cursor above the edge of this pill where you see the cursor changes into a line with two arrows. Hold down your left mouse and Drag this to a position that you feel is better for the text start time. Because right now, this is too early for it to start because it's not coming through the clouds. So I'm going to come to right about here. And now we can see that the text doesn't start until sometime after this pill. And that looked a lot better. So I'm going to click on OK. And what I want to do now is it looked better, but it wasn't still not as good. So I'm going to drag out my title so it's longer before I make any other adjustments. The reason why I want to do this is because the longer I make the title, the longer it will take the text to appear as well. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go to adjust duration. And change it to a duration that I want. And that will work for me because I already know how long I need it to be. So now I'm going to scroll through here. And now you see the text rises out of the clouds out of the haze and onto the screen. And what you could do is you could add a fade at the end if you want. Since the title is going longer than the images and it should look real good. And that's it peeps. Parallux scrolling text for your viewing enjoyment. All right, guys, you know the routine. The thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click it, like it, lift it, love it, hug it. Show the thumb some love, people. Comments. If you want to get with me, leave a comment on the video. Otherwise, you may not hear from me. But if you do comment, I will respond. And if I can't help you, I'll point you in the right direction to get you the help that you need. And last but not least, if you want to get goodness like this on a regular basis, you got to subscribe. If you don't subscribe, you'll miss out whenever I upload a video. And then you won't get my luscious Pinnacle Studio tips. 
Thanks for watching. See you again soon.